Jim, with, <laughs> after Kinder, two of the biggest ever That's energy true. deals have been announced since last summer. Kinder, his stock has done quite well. Uh, and that's important to point out. It's been a very big win. Rich Kinder, it's a uh, charitable trust name. We're all Dutch charitable trust name. Here's my feeling on this. Uh, ben Van Buren has been on mad money. Sensible man. Uh, clearly overpaid for this asset, which was uh, in a lot of trouble, PG. They were trying to meet deliverables for natural gas. It, it was a great chance to come in. But Andrew Gould was the chairman of that company, and that's the former CEO of Schlumberger. And they did not give that company away. Helga Lund got a great price for it. He's the CEO of BG. Shell, a new uh, CEO, by the way, having only he, taken He just over. made a fortune in a couple yes. of weeks there. Um, I think that Shell overpaid. Uh, I don't want to say they dramatically overpaid because I think that they could have bought this thing for far less. No one else was going to come in. People were hoping that Shell would take advantage of Permian assets by there. This is a liquefied natural gas, bet on natural gas. Uh, the, the only thing that I really like that I really liked about the deal is, is that I don't know if BG could develop its 500,000 barrels a day Brazilian properties. And that makes sense. So uh, I think this stock is, uh, if you wanted to sell calls against it, they did declare the dividend. I think that's really important because a lot of people felt the Royal Dutch was going to cut the dividend. Instead, they see the dividend out for a couple of years. So that's why the stock is not completely being annihilated. $25 billion from 2017 into 2020. Right. And, and you look, these companies have to have this vision, and they do have a lot of cash flow, and there's a lot of – it's absolutely a lot of overlap. Royal Dutch can do a lot. But in the in sense of buying the stock, I think it could work its way higher over the next seven years. Yeah. For the next seven years. Well, well I've got to take a long term. They're taking a 2020 perspective. I'll take a 2022 right now, perspective. From a risk arbitrage perspective, the spread is, is quite narrow, Isn't even that though it would seem to really, given the price paid, that seems to rule out the idea of the very small group of potential other buyers here. You mean like Exxon? Interest. It's not going to happen. Exxon, I mean, what plus I've been able a 50% to gather. premium. I think, I swear, if they had done a 35% premium, maybe well, BG could have held think, out Jim, for a couple is, of months. What is potentially interesting here is we've been waiting, given the fall in oil prices of such a dramatic nature, right. for consolidation to take place, but more from a distressed yeah. point of view, that well, there BG would be deals distressed. to be had. Right, but none of, the, none of the... Nothing we've seen so far indicates distress in the price that the buyers are willing to pay. No, and this was a distress in a deliverable of natural gas. I and mean, so it just happened to these be- companies are getting significant multiples. In this case, what is it? I mean, it's it's eight percent dilutive to Shell. It's you know on, on an NAV, uh, even with synergies. At least I'm seeing some of the research notes here. They are said to be buying growth. It's about LNG. They had it's no about deep water oil. And they were buying. They had the highest. I mean, I, when I talked to Ben, I mean, they had this incredibly high cost base. I mean, the stuff, they really were, you know, they were doing this stuff in Canada that was presuming that oil was easily going to go to like $270. I mean, honestly, those properties were, they are insane what they're trying to develop in Canada. And this is cheaper and it's natural gas and there is going to be a natural gas shortage in Asia, but there is no natural gas shortage in this country. And our natural gas is going to probably go under $2 because we have so much of it. So, I mean, is it a good deal? I don't know. I mean, I think they could, it would have been a good deal if they had bought it for well, yeah, a 40% they came, premium. It was an unsolicited bid. Typically, yeah. when you do that, you got to come with a decent price. I know. By the way, uh, just to check off things, I mean, they're talking about a close in early 2016, so quite some time. You're going to need Brazil antitrust. You're going to need China. Those are always can be question marks in these kinds of things. A $1.2 billion break fee for those who are looking at the spread here and wow. saying, God, it's pretty tight and thinking, could somebody come in over the top? I mean, that's typical, but it's a big right. number. It's high. Given your it's analysis big, yeah. and others, it seems hard to imagine anybody's going to pay more than what Shell was willing to pay if, here. If someone does, they're an even bigger sucker. I mean, geez, this is just a gigantic natural gas buy. But- Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.